We weren't doing anything. We were just messing up. Pardon me, but is that a giant bullseye on your back? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie victim types. You're the jock. You have a baseball bat or something. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most popular and prevalent character archetypes found within the horror movie genre. These characters don't always have to die, but they often suffer the wrath of each film's main villain as intended victims or targets. Hey! Oh, and given the fact that we'll definitely be revealing some major death scenes along the way, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Want to talk about? Number 10, The Non-Believers. There are no Sasquatches. There are no big feet. We start our list with what's perhaps the most frustrating victim type of all, the non-believers. These are the characters that simply refuse to acknowledge any of the creepy, suspicious, or downright terrifying things that happen to be going on around them in the film. There's no such thing as ghosts. The non-believers often arrive armed with an explanation for just about everything, until it's too late. These characters are usually separated from the main group, or otherwise refuse to do anything about the killer, and they end up becoming mincemeat for their troubles. Hey guys, you were warned. He's trying to come in! There's nothing out here! Number 9, The Redneck. He looks like he's gonna walk it off. He's gonna be fine. <sighs> Not every horror film has a redneck-like character in it, but when they do, they're often in cahoots with the killers rather than the victims. Ah! Oh, that's good, isn't it, Grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> They do sometimes appear on the other end of things, though, like the tragically doomed Jake and Bobby Joe from Sam Raimi's Evil Dead 2. I can't breathe! I, I can't breathe! In this sense, the redneck is usually hard-headed and stubborn, and it's these qualities that often prevent this victim type from surviving to the end. Do you find it impossible to compromise or collaborate with others in even the direst of situations? Then you just might be the redneck in a horror film. <laughs> Number eight, the fat one. Rule number one for surviving zombie land, cardio. Okay, we know it may not be PC to use this term, but political correctness was never exactly the calling card of 1980s slasher movies. But I think you're really out of line. This was where the character archetype of the fat one was often found, usually as the butt of a joke or as some sort of comic relief. <laughs> Poor fat bastard. Then again, there are also examples like Shelley from Friday the 13th Part 3, a lovable but socially awkward sort who uses cheap scares and masks to hide his self-consciousness. Would you be yourself if you look like this? Shelley was one of the franchise's most memorable and beloved characters, yet even that fact didn't save him from dying at the hands of Jason Voorhees. Nice makeup job. <laughs> Number seven, the love interest or the best friend. I'll tell you what, once you guys go up to my parents' room, you know, you guys can talk, whatever. Every horror hero needs some backup, right? Well, this is where the love interest or best friend characters come in, as moral support to the film's primary protagonist. These peripheral characters could be romantically involved with or in a platonic relationship with the main character, and sometimes they even serve as one of the few survivors of a maniacal killer's attack. I'm so sorry I almost shot you. I probably wouldn't have. Unfortunately, the love interest or best friend is also just as likely to end up a victim, usually as a result of some courageous or heroic final stand, so that the hero can attain the upper hand over the killer. Rest in peace, guys. They couldn't have done it without you. Are you all right? Come on, let's just go. Number six, the stoner. Oh. Mm. many of us might be able to identify with the stoner. After all, isn't there a small part of us that would just want to say, screw it, I'm getting as high as possible before I have to deal with this maniac stalking me? Giant evil gods. Okay, maybe that isn't the best of ideas now that we say it out loud, but that hasn't stopped the stoner from puffing away in countless horror movies. Sadly, this is usually the last thing they do before falling under the killer's blade one last bit of escapism before it all fades to black. Give me my ball back, bitch! Damn. Much like the usually none too bright stoner, the idiot is another victim type that's dead meat right from the start. <laughs> Number 
five, the authority figure. I said I know who it is. Who? It's Jason Voorhees. Existing alongside the non-believers as some of the horror world's most infuriating characters, the authority figure does all they can to impede the progress of the heroes. They could align themselves with another victim type, the useless cop, and temporarily imprison the heroes while the rest of the town gets cut up. Or the authority figure could find other ways to abuse their power to get in the other character's way. No one in Forest Green wants to be reminded of what that maniac did here. That's why we changed the name. Although this victim type often sees the error of their ways before the film's end, this usually isn't enough to save them from death. Although the authority figure occasionally receives a nice scene of redemption before biting the dust. Number four, the jock or the jerk. You love to hate them, these jocks and jerks of the horror movie universe. This character type is usually attached to one of the film's main characters as some sort of dysfunctional love interest, but this situation rarely lasts the entire film. This is because the jock or jerk is such an insufferable character, picking on almost everyone around them and alienating themselves from the rest of the group. <laughs> this usually leads to their demise by the film's killer, scared, alone, and without any friends to save them from their deadly but just desserts. <laughs> Number three, the promiscuous girl. Hello. <gasps> uh, uh. It might actually be unfair to label this as one gender over another because, let's face it, sex equals death in many classic horror films. Still, the promiscuous girl serves a twofold purpose. Not only is she there to die after her prerequisite sex scene, she's also there to provide slasher and exploitation films with their expected amount of nudity. Unfortunately, the promiscuous girl rarely, if ever, makes it to the end, further emphasizing the connection between conservative 80s-era values and old-school horror flicks. Still, there are worse ways to go out, though, right? <gasps> Number two, the black guy, who always dies first. Who's that? This one simultaneously something of a misnomer, while at the same time remaining a statistic to this day. Although films like 2017's Get Out thankfully modernized some of the racial roles in horror films, minorities in the genre suffered for decades as victims, with very few making it to the end credits alive. Indeed, for every black protagonist, like Peter from George Romero's original Dawn of the Dead, We've had a slew of token African-American characters that are simply there to diversify the cast and increase the body count. They may not always die first, but for the black guy, death is almost certain in the world of old school horror. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Before we reveal our top horror movie victim, here are a few dead to rights honorable mentions. Sorry, kids, I don't believe in fairy tales. Number one, The Final Girl. Jason, mother is talking to you! The Final Girl is one of the most defining tropes of classic horror, especially within the slasher boom of the 1980s. The term is used to represent the pure, virginal, or otherwise wholesome main character that faces off with the killer in a climactic battle. The Final Girl is often aided by the love interest or best friend in this goal, and is usually successful. Barring, of course, any last-second sequel teases by the filmmakers. <laughs> The final girl is also a character that often returns for those sequels, although history has shown us that even these brave, resourceful women end up falling to the Freddies and the Jasons of the world eventually. Die. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.